Okay. <clears throat> we are in middle of Torah Yud called Ve'ila Mishpatim. And Rabbi Nachman was teaching us about the tefillah. He was speaking about how the tzaddik has the ability to take the prayer, to take the tefillah and to make, it, to make the high level of tefillah, the proper level, the complete level of tefillah accessible to everyone in the world. Uh, so he takes the prayer from the aspect of mountain, which is the aspect that Avram Avinu brought the prayer into. Avram Avinu was the first one who called Hashem Adon, the master. Adon, the name Adon, the master, is the name that we use uh, in, in, in connection to tefillah, in the context of tefillah. That's why we say Adonai Sifatai Tiftach. Okay? And this name of Hashem is referring to the Malchut. Because all of prayer is tikkun amalchut, is rectifying the malchut, is rectifying the aspect of Hashem is, is, is in charge and control of everything. And Avram Avinu was the first one who called Hashem Adon in the whole world. He is the one who brought this revelation in, in this world. He brought about this revelation, this connection to Hashem, which is, which is the beginning and the end of the reason for creation of the world. Right, so so Mashiach is going to complete that, but Avram Avinu is the one who began that that work. Uh, that's actually why there's a Gemara in Mesechet Brachot. The Gemara in Mesechet Brachot, Taf Mem Amud Bet, says over there that uh, that uh, halachically, if a person makes a bracha, you need to have two things in the bracha for it to be to be to for it to be counted halachically as a bracha. That's called Shemu Malchut. Abracha has to have shem malchut. Shem is uh, Hashem's name, Yud Kevavke. And malchut is when you say melech ha'olam. And if you don't have those two things in a bracha, halachically it's not considered a bracha. So Tosfot over there explains, if so, why is the Shmona Esrei considered a bracha? We say at the beginning of Shmona Esrei, Baruch Atah Hashem. So you have shame, but you don't say melech ha'olam. You go right away and you say, Elokeinu v'elokei avoteinu. Right? So Tosfot says, that when we say, Elokei Avraham, Elokei Avraham, because Avram Avinu was the one that revealed the Malchut of Hashem in the world, he brings about the Malchut of Hashem. He is the first one to call Hashem Adon. It's as if we said, Melech HaOlam. We are mentioning the kingship of Hashem, the, so the complete sovereignty and control of Hashem in everything in the world. Anyway, so this is Avram Avinu, but still it was only in the aspect of Har, when Avram Avinu did this. And then Yitzchak Avinu brought it from Har, from mountain, to Sadeh, to the field, and then Yaakov Avinu from the field, he made it accessible on the level of uh, of the of the of the of the dira of the house of a person. Okay, uh, bite. These are the three things: hal sadeh and bite. So then, Rabbi Nachman told us about how we need to bring our filo to the tzaddik, because the tzaddik he is the one who's able to elevate our tefillot and to really complete them and fix them and rectify them so that our prayers are on this complete level, on this perfected level. And he's able to bring down the shefa to us in this way. But then there's these uh, sinners that, uh, that, are, that are cynical and they are full of doubt and they pr bring everyone to doubt the tzaddik. And they say, why are you going to the tzaddik? We can also pray for you. And Rabbi Nachman told us about um, their deficiencies and how even though they may be fasting and may be doing all these things in Avodah Tashem, but they, they still didn't rid themselves from the, the negativity, from the deficiencies, the spiritual deficiencies uh, in, their, in their physical body, not only in their physical body because of their own midot that they didn't fix, but even from their, their father, from their father, from what they were born with, they also did not fix that. Um, and that's what we were up to. Right, so Rabbi Nachman was telling us how he brings this pasuk. He speaks about he brings the pasuk in Bereshit, in uh, what was it, Parshat uh, Vayeshev, I think, Parshat Vayeshev, Parshat Vayeshev or Vayigash, where 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 the the brothers when they're on their way back to Yaakov, and they open up the their bags and they find they find the money. They found their money in their bags. And so Rabbi Nachman is explaining this pasuk to mean that it's alluding, 
it's alluding to this idea of the people that they empty out their bags, they empty out their body with fasts and all these things that they're doing, but still uh, the, 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 the money, their other ta'avot, their lust, their desires, the animal self is still there. It's still connected to their physical body. And they didn't rid themselves of it at all. And then the continuation of that, the next passage about Vayomer lehem Yaakov avihem, Oti shikaltim Yosef inenu. Uh, ya- Yaakov Avinu says, Yaakov Avinu says to them, that you're making me lose my children. Shikaltim shachul is, is a word that is meant to describe someone that doesn't have children. So he says to them, you're making me lose my children. Yosef is gone, and now, and now you want to take Binyamin, right? So he says that Yaakov is the seichel, Yaakov is the Seichel, it represents the Seichel. We see this in a few places in the Kutim Aran. Also, we see this on in Torah Aleph, right? Yeah, Yaakov is the Seichel within every everything. And so he says to them, the Seichel is saying, is is giving Tochacha, the Seichel is giving rebuke, and he's telling these Bali Gaiva, he's telling these people that are haughty, that are full of pride and ego, he's telling them that he's telling them that you are causing me, the seichel, to be lost. Because anyone who has, uh, who increases their ego, who allows their ego to rise and to take control, instead of releasing the ego, such a person causes the seichel the chachma, the neshama of the person, to leave as well. And so that's what the, the Yaakov is rebuking them. Okay, and then he says to them, Yosef inenu, Yosef was lost already, right? Yosef inenu means Yosef is the aspect of rectifying that which was, uh, needs to be fixed, the sins that of, a, of a person. That's what Yosef does. Yosef removes any shame. He removes any lack. He transforms any uh, any any reason for shame into a reason for honor, for respect. Okay, he removes all the lack, all the deficiencies, and he transforms them into a, all the minuses into a plus. That's what Yosef does. And when Yaakov and the Seichel is rebuking those people that are the egoist, egotistical people that are full of gaiva and haughtiness, and he's telling them you're causing the Seichel to be lost. And Yosef is lost. Yosef is the aspect of rectifying that which was uh, the, the sins of a person because he's telling them that you still haven't fixed your own sins, okay? your own shame. You still have your own shame. And you have a lot of reasons to be ashamed and to recognize your deficiency. And still, not only are you not aware of what you need to fix, you're also dissuading other people from going to the tzaddik who has already fixed all these things. Okay, so that's what ya- that's what Yaakov is is telling them. Yesh lachemid bayesh mechamato. You have these things that you are you are to be aware and to be ashamed that you know these are things that you need to that you're deficient that you still need to fix. Not only are you not aware of that, but you are also uh, but you are also dissuading all these people. Ki tikkun amivuvato bechinat Yosef. Hashem asaf elohim el cherpati. The tikkun of of uh, that which uh, needs. The, the deficiencies of a person, the spiritual deficiencies, that's the aspect of Yosef because he removes the shame. He removes any, any, any need, any reason for shame. The Shimon Einenu, Shimon was also not there because Shimon was held captive by Yosef, right? So what is that alluding to? Through this, that you don't have this aspect of Yosef, okay, you also don't have the aspect of Shimon. What does that mean? What's the aspect of Shimon? So Yosef, we know what's the aspect of Yosef. Yosef is, fixing, is rectifying the person's sins. The person has sins. The person has things that are he would rather he did not have in his past. Okay, these are things that are not the most um, uh, and he's in most glorifying moments of a person's life. They're not the most glorifying moments. Okay, and a person needs to fix those things. And Yosef is the aspect that fixes that. Yosef removes those things. That means that a person does not have to live with the shame and guilt of the past. Not only that, actual tikkun abrit, a proper tikkun abrit, is when a person releases the shame and the guilt of the past. Okay, there are a few ways that a person does that. Um, in Shuvah, we have this thing called re- charata. Charata is not, a simple translation is regret, but Kabbalistically, on a dip, deeper level, it's a lot more than just regret. Regret 
sounds like you are to constantly regret it and constantly feel um, guilty and ashamed about it. But that's not really spiritually, that's not really constructive. It doesn't really help a person spiritually. To the opposite effect, it causes a person to fall into depression, into um, despair, and it causes a person to sin even more, right? Uh, any, um, any, any person who became a real addict in something, it's because they enforced their, 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 their identi identifying with themselves as an addict. As much as a person sees themselves as having all these terrible things in their past, then they will just continue falling into those things. So then what's charata? Charata, the word charata in Hebrew, the word itself, the shoresh, where that word comes from, it means to, it means to, not to cut out, but to carve out. Charata means to carve out. So what does that mean? That means that when a person has charata, the regret is only there for a moment to recognize which parts of your past you want to carve out. Okay, charata is only for the time when you go and you do the work, the inner work of teshuva, and you get into a meditative state, and you're doing cheshbon nefesh, right? You're you're paying attention to your past and to the, the the actions, the words, the thought patterns, the belief systems, the attitudes, and the ways of being, the ways of living that were not in alignment with what Hashem wants us, how Hashem wants us to live. They were not in alignment with the Torah, and you identify them clearly and because you are regretting those things because you are accepting the will of hashem and you no longer want to live in those ways so that's where the regret comes in now you need to carve them out and by, and by carving them out what does that mean you need to revise your past you need to revise your past and you have to imagine as if that past did not happen you have to go back into your timeline okay there's something even uh, there's a whole therapy called timeline therapy connected to NLP, but this is all in the Torah. This is all about it of the Torah, where that's why teshuva is kabbalistically the world that is above time, okay? Because it's the ability to go above and to revise your timeline. You need to go back, and now with your charata, with your regrets, and you are able to carve out those scenarios, those situations, and you need to replay your past in a way that does not have all of those uh, stories, those negative stories in there. And that will affect the, the present moment. And then the person will be freed from that past. Okay, and that's why teshuva, the world of teshuva, which is kabbalistically the world of bina, in the Zohar is called alma dechel. It's the word world of freedom. I mean, that's the world that that causes freedom. You're no longer held down by the sins of the past. Anyways, how did I get into this? So this is what Yosef does. This is the aspect of Yosef. Yosef is asafil himichelpati. He gathers and removes all of the reasons for shame and guilt in a person. Right. That's why the chakra, the root chakra, of the yesod is. It, rectifying that is connected to releasing any guilt and shame. Okay, that's what Yosef comes and does. So now he says that because you don't have Yosef, you also don't have Shimon. What's Shimon? So he says Shimon is the aspect of the Shimon who bechinat kishama Hashem kisenua anochi. Okay, he, because Hashem heard. What? Did, why? Why did she call? Leah called her son Shimon because Hashem heard that I was I was um, that I was despised in the household. She was not the most beloved wife among all the wives. She was not the most beloved. Rachel was obviously a lot more beloved to to Yaakov. Because Hashem heard that I am despised. So what does that mean? Says Rabbi Nachman, it means that the tzaddik or the seichel or neshama is rebuking those egotistical people that are dissuading people from going to, to the tzaddik to pray for them. And he's, and he's telling them, look, you don't have Yosef. You didn't fix your past. You also don't have Shimon. What does it mean you don't have Shimon? You don't have this aspect of hearing and, and recognizing that people despise you. People don't like you. What does that mean? Why is that, why is that a bad thing? 
I would think it's a good thing that people don't despise you. So says Rabbi Nachman, no. Everybody loves you. So why is that a bad thing? Explains Rabbi Nachman, because if you had fixed your past, then you would be on the level that you would be able to rebuke others for their wrongdoing. Because if a person did not fix their past, and the person has all these sins in their, in, in their, in their pecula, in their backpack, he's carrying all these sins around with him, and then he tells somebody, he tells somebody, uh, like the Gemara says, the Gemara brings <laughs> this expression, if he tells somebody, take out the, take out this, uh, this, how do you say, kutz, take out the thorn from between your teeth, so then he will answer you, take out the beam from between your eyes, meaning that, that, um, what's this, what's, there's an expression in English about it, uh, practice what you preach, right? Um, there's a lot of these expressions, something about, there's something about the greenhouse, what was it? The glass, the glass roof or something like that. Uh, I don't remember it right now. The glass house. People in glass houses should not throw stones. Exactly. So, but if you had fixed your past, then you're able to rebuke others. And if you rebuke others, then people, uh, you're not the most beloved person around. Not everybody loves you as much. And the, Rabbi Nachman brings a Gemara like this. The Gemara says in the Sechet Ketubot, the, the, if you see a young Talmud Chacham, that everyone in his uh, city, they all love him, right? They're all crazy about him. They all love him. So it's not because he's better than the other Talmud Chachamim. It's because he feels to rebuke them in the spiritual matters. And that's why they love him so much. Obviously, if he's only there, only telling you sweet words, only speaking to you kindly and nicely and not telling you to change in any way, and he's just allowing you to live your life as you wish, and and be as you wish and not only should you just live your life as you wish he's also respecting you and and doing all these things so then obviously they're only going to love you but if you have a time in the yes he respects you and yes he speaks to you nicely and yes he speaks to you kindly and yes he gives you chizuk like rabbi nachman says is so important in giving proper rebuke is that you should strengthen the person you shouldn't break them down but He's always telling me to fix this and telling me to fix that. Yes, he's telling me in a nice way. But because he's telling me to change the way I'm living my life, he's not the most loved person. You know, maybe if I see him in the street, maybe I want to go another way. I don't know. So that's the Shimon Enenu. Because you don't have Yosef, you also don't have Shimon. Shimon is that you are not, uh, you're not always the most loved by everybody because you're able to rebuke them. Because you've come to the level of Tzaddik. And you have rectified your past. The et binyamin tikachu, and now you want to take binyamin. What does this mean? Zemore al gadlut. This indicates uh, gaiva. Why? Ki perish rashi binyamin Hashem eretz Israel binyamin ve eretz Israel gavua mikol aratzot. Binyamin alludes to, as we know, Benyamin. Rashi says is on the name of eretz Israel. Ben Yamin, Eretz Yisrael is Yamin, is a place of Chochmah, which is Yamin, the side of the right. And, um, and Eretz Yisrael is higher than all the other places in the world. And therefore, Eretz Yisrael represents this aspect of being higher than above and over everyone else. And so, Ben Binyamin Tekahu, you want to take this aspect of being greater than everyone else? You are not worthy of feeling yourself greater than everyone else with, with the, these deficiencies that you have. Not only are you deficient in Yosef and you're deficient in, in Shimon, but now you also want to take uh, this aspect of, 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 of importance, of prominence for yourself, which is Binyamin. What does he end up saying? 
כי הכל נופל עליי, כי כל המתגאה חוכמתו מסתלקת ממנו. He says, all these, all these things are happening to me, and all these things are, are troubles, my troubles, says Yaakov, says the Seichel, right? Why? Why is all these things the troubles of the Seichel? Because all these things are causing the Seichel, the nisham of a person, to leave him. Right? Because when a person has gaiva, when a person has this uh, taking the significance for himself that he's greater than everyone else, then his chokma leaves him, the Gemara says. So now, how does a person get rid of this gaiva? So we need an Eitzah, how to get rid from the, uh, get, get advice, how to get rid of this gaiva. Says Rabbi Nachman, העיקר הוא על ידי התקרבות לצדיקים. כמובן, בתיקונים, בתרועה דאי הוא רוחה את אוויר אל אחר. How does a person save himself and rectify himself from hardiness? Eliminate the gaiva, which is, which is considered idolatry. Gaiva is considered avodazara. Okay? Because what you're doing in gaiva is you're taking malchut, sovereignty of Hashem, and you're giving it to yourself. So that's considered idol worship. That's Avodah Zarah. And it's actually, it's, it's a Pasuk. The Pasuk says, to avat Hashem kol gvalev, that Hashem considers it an abomination, someone who is haughty. So how does a person clean himself, purify himself, and eliminate this haughtiness? Through making himself connected, connecting himself, and becoming close to the tzaddikim, building a strong and close relationship with the tzaddikim of the generation. How do we know this, says Rabbi Nachman? What is my, my basis for this? So he brings the Tikkun Azor. Tikkun Azor says, Bitru'a de'ihu ruha it avir el acher. He says, with the shofar blast, with the trua, which is... Ruach, okay, there's a Ruach that is revealed, that emanates from the shofar breath. That's the Ruach that comes, the breath that comes out of when a person is blowing the shofar, there's the breath, the innermost part of a person's neshama that is expressed outwardly through the blowing of the shofar. So that's an expression of the Ruach, which is the neshama. The pure essence of a person's soul is expressed through blowing of the shofar. Through that, says the Zohar, the El Acher is eliminated. The other gods, okay, or the belief in other gods, the ability for there to exist an illusion of other gods, of other powers, is eliminated, is dis disappeared. Okay, so Rabbi Nachman says, what is this Rucha? What is this ruach that is expressed through the blowing of the shofar? Where can you find such a ruha? Because if I would find such a ruha, such a ruach, such a spirit, then I would connect myself to such a spirit. And as the Zohar says, that spirit eliminates that ruach, that holy ruach eliminates the idol worship, the avodazara, the illusion of other entities, of other beings, of other uh, powers of other of anyone else in control, but the Rebona Shalom, that illusion is eliminated through this Ruach. So let me find such a Ruach, and if I connect to such a Ruach, I will eliminate the Gaiva, because the Gaiva, the haughtiness, is this El Acher, it's this, it is this idolatry. It is when I take for myself control and significance and importance, I, and instead of relinquishing all importance and all control to the Rebona Shalom when I take it for myself, that's gaiva, and that's idol worship. That's haughtiness, and that's idol worship. And what eliminates that? What makes that disappear? What dissolves that? It's the ruach, the holy ruach uh, that we said is expressed through the shofar. But where can I find such a ruach? Says Rabbi Nachman, that ruach is the tzaddik. The tzaddik is that ruach. And if I connect myself to the tzaddik, then the, to that ruach, to the tzaddik, which is that ruach, that will eliminate and disappear and dissolve all of the gaiva, all of the haughtiness, all of the idolatry. The tzaddik is the aspect of the ruach. When Hashem tells Moshe who to appoint to be the next 
uh, leader of Am Yisrael, and he tells him to appoint Yoshua. He says about Yoshua that he is a man of spirit. Within him is the spirit of Hashem. Ish Asher Ruach Bo. So the tzaddikim of the generation, says Rabbi Nachman, are men of Hashem's spirit, men of Ruach HaKodesh. Okay? Says Rabbi Nachman, this spirit, the Holy Spirit within the tzaddik, eliminates the Ruach, what's called Gaiva, haughtiness, is also called a spirit, okay? But it's called the haughty spirit, Ruach Gavoa. And this Ruach of holiness, the Holy Spirit eliminates the Ruach Gavoa, the Gaiva. Okay. And from this Ruach of the Tzaddik that eliminates and dissolves the Ruach of the Rasha, the Ruach of Gaiva, the Ruach of Haughtiness, you, you transform El Acher, other gods, into Havaya Echad. Acher turns into Echad. Acher, others, turn into one, Echad. And what, what changes it? What transformed it's an identical, identical world, word almost. Every letter is exactly the same except for the Dalit. And the Dalit and the Reish are exactly the same except for the Kutso Shal Yud, the tiny point at the back of the Dalit. And that's what your, the Tzadik comes in through his Ruach, his Holy Ruach. He transforms the El Acher into Avaya Echad. Acher into Echad with this Yud. Okay? That's the spike at the back of the letter Dalin. Which is the source of all the four, the four, uh, the four ruchot. We know there are four winds and four directions and four spirits and four energies. And the source of that is the kutz, is the spike of the yud, which is also the same spike that you see at the back of the Dalin, because the Dalin becomes a Dalit from that spike. From that yud, okay, and that's the tzaddik. He brings that about, and he turns the acher into the echad. From that comes about the four, the four, uh, direct, the four spirits, the four winds. As it says in Yechezkel, that uh, so says Hashem that from the four winds comes the one, the one spirit. And this is something we also mentioned earlier in the Torah about the tzitzit. Um, we spoke about how the, the ruach that that uh, the ruach that fills up the void in a person's heart, whatever deficiencies a person is experiencing, when a person sighs and he lengthens and deepens the breath, and he's connected to the tzaddik, from the tzaddik he receives this ruach that eliminates all the deficiencies, and it fills up that void. And we said in that Torah that that's the aspect of that ruach is the source for the four sides, the four um, the four elements of the world, the four letters of Yud Chevavke, which is represented in the four sides of the tzitzit, the four tzitzit, the four corners of the tzitzit, right? And so that's this ruach. So we see that idea that we said over there in this Torah as well, that this is the tzaddik. The tzaddik is this ruach, which is the source of the four elements, because he brings that Ruach of Hashem into the world, and that manifests in the four elements of, of the world, in the four spirits, the four sides, the four corners of the tzitzit. V'zeh l'shon teru'ah, and says Rabbi Nachman, earlier we just mentioned that this is all in the Tikkun Yazor about how that this Ruach emanates and is expressed through the blowing of the shofar, right? So the blowing of the shofar, the Zohar says, Tru'ah, from that Tru'ah, the blowing of the shofar, the shofar blast. So says Rabbi Nachman, this whole secret that we just, I just explained to you is alluded to in the word Tru'ah. Why? Because the word Tru'ah comes from the word, from the Pasuk, in the context, in the Pasuk in Tehillim. Tero'em b'shevet barzel. Tru'ah, it's from the same word as Tero'em. Tero'em means you should break them. You should break them, the enemies of Hashem, you should break them with an iron rod. An iron rod. Okay? So, teru'ah, it breaks, it dissolves, it eliminates. It eliminates what? What does it dissolve? And it eliminates and dissolves the ruach, the, the spirit or, of haughtiness, of gaiva, which is the idolatry, the illusion of, 
other entities and our other energies and other controls, uh, other others in control aside from the Rebona Shalolam. Because the Ruach of the Tzaddik, the Holy Ruach of the Tzaddik, eliminates this haughty spirit, the spirit of the other gods, the, illus uh, the illusions of other gods, and the belief system, the atheistic, the atheist uh, belief system. Okay, I think we should stop here for today. And let's see here. Shukriya.